konsorsyo. Napakaganda itong epektong ito. Ano ang kahalagaan nito? Mamaya, ilalagay natin yung last, last span para mabuo yung kompletong phase 1 biodac na kung saan magbibigay ugnayan itong lugar na ito papunta sa Cavite na kung saan magkakaroon ng kinatawag na mobility, connectivity at convenience along the lines and along the mandate of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stop in this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it To my own domain Yeah I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots Skipping breaks Feeling lost Feeling great Popping off Singing straight Never stop Never changed All the squad here to play And I've got something to say Yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause No I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits I build tall, never cap in space I won't stop till I hear him say Of course, led by Secretary Art Tugade. Under Secretary Timothy John Batan. Under Secretary Giovanni Lopez. We also have the presence of PNR General Manager June Magno. From Light Rail Transit Authority, we have LRT Administrator Jeremy Regino, Deputy Administrator Paul Chua, Project Manager Eleanor Palaypay, and 
our partners from the Paranaque Local Government, Mr. Mario Mar Jimenez, who is representing Paranaque Mayor Edwin Olivares and is also the head of PIO. We also have Barangay Chairman Julius Zayden. Our friends from the media who are always supportive of our events. Uh, we are also joined by our friends from the different railway and commuter groups, Out Mobility, Philippine Association of Railway Enthusiasts, and the Philippine Train Enthusiasts and Rail Fans Club. We know that an efficient transportation system is always a big part in improving the quality of lives of Filipinos. And in recent years, we've seen the developments of many railway projects taking shape. One of which is the LRT1 Cavite Extension Project, which will see the addition of eight more stations to the existing LRT1. For today, we are celebrating the completion of the viaduct for Phase 1, which covers the stretch of Redemptorist until Dr. A. Santos. Many Filipinos are already excited about its development and the convenience that this project will bring to the daily lives of Filipinos especially for the residents of Paranaque, Las Piñas, and Cavite. Despite the complexities, the challenges, and the limitations brought by the pandemic, our teams carried on, and now the project is already in various stages of development. Without further ado, please allow me to call on LRNC, LRNC President, Mr. Juan F. Alfonso, to formally kick off today's program and to give us the welcome message. Good morning to everyone here today. LRMC is honored to be working closely with our partners in Buick Philippines in preparing for this much-awaited milestone. Certainly it took a village and we are thankful to everyone who has been part of this journey. I would like to acknowledge the presence of some of the people who are here today from the DOTR Sec Art Artugade, Yusek Giovanni Lopez, Yusek TJ Batan, um, also GM Jun Magno, from the LRTA administra ad Administrator Jeremy Aguino, Deputy Admin um, Paul Chua, and Ms. Ellen Palay Palaypayon. From the LGU, Mr. Mark Jimenez, um, and the Barangay Ch Chairman Julius Zayden. And our friends from the media who are here and continue to share stories that would help us inform the public. I would also like to acknowledge the support from our shareholders from Metro Pacific Investments Corporation, led by our chairman, Mr. MVP, Manny Pangilina, Sumitomo Corporation, AC Infrastructure, and Macquarie. Today is an excellent showcase of how a strong partnership between the public and the private sectors can benefit the Filipino consumers. I would also like, uh, so, excuse me, change indeed has come to our lives in the past two years. LRMC as a company has adapted to this change and is poised to recover and grow as our lives go back to normal. We are ready to grow and strengthen our services and we are glad to welcome everyone in 2022 with this Cavite extension milestone. It's been only a little over two years since the civil work started in September 2019. And we are already witnessing the viaduct completion and installation of final girder in phase one. Definitely the road was not easy and I'm proud of the sacrifice of all our teams led by our CEMTT, uh, led by Abed Benipayo, Remo Resentes, 
and uh, Scott Anderson, Mike Lloyd, Brandon Yap, and Carlos Tan. We displayed resilience in unsettling conditions and determination to deliver with excellence. And we ended the year with almost 70% overall progress for this extension project. Of course, it came with the expertise and world-class world construction of our partners from Bui, who were able to make use of a special engineering method for a first time in the Philippines and has allowed us for faster execution and minimal effect on ground level traffic. Constructing the railway system is a complex process. Not only entails civil works, but also electrical and mechanical, which are important in rail safety. We've recently completed the signaling upgrade through to a new Alstom system. And this is part and parcel of the 25 billion investment both in the rehabilitation and the extension of the LRT-1 system. LRMC is in the service of giving people back their time through efficient, reliable, and safe transport. And through the upgrading of the LRT-1 system, we hope to make a difference and give the country something better for the future generations. LRMC has prepared for the next years to complete the Cavite extension and complete the LRMC story. We live an exciting time for our railway industry and we have to sustain this momentum. I hope we can continue to work together for our collective strengths and foundation for this way forward. And then before I end, I would really like to thank our partners in Buit, Philippines and also remember those who have gone before us like one of our colleagues from from Bui, Dominic Brino, and also one of our and then also some of our colleagues from LRMC, uh, Mr. Chito Francisco and Poppy Lagos. So we remember them today with this achievement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. JFA. Now I'm sure everyone is wondering about this giant launching girder behind us. So to tell us more about this, uh, we would like to call on Bui Philippines Project Director, Mr. Drasco Strika, to share the specifics of today's milestone. President Alfonso, uh, Secretary Tugade, uh, Administrator Rahino, uh, LG, EU Representative Jimenez, uh, Chairman Zaide, uh, Stakeholders Representatives, Deputy Project Director Huang, and my boy team, a very good morning to you all. On behalf of the EPCC Consortium, Boyd is delighted that you are here today to celebrate the successful completion of the LRT1 Cavite uh, Extension Phase 1 Viaduct. It marks a major turning point in the project, whereas Roy shifts its focus towards station construction, and our partner takes over the viaduct and proceeds with system works. The success we celebrate today is a shared success for us all. It's because of a partnership of mutual respect we have developed with President Alfonso and his LRMC team and the wider stakeholder community. A partnership built with a common focus and built on collaboration, transparency, and trust. And underpinned by a boy commitment to always deliver work as planned, safely, and to the highest industry standards. These are values shared by the boy and LRMC organizations. We heard President Alfonso in the opening remarks refer to world-class technology and expertise brought to this project. This approach we refer to as shared innovation, and it is at the heart of Boeing delivering, delivering excellence to its global partners. Specifically, I'm referring to the launching gantry that you see behind me. She is known as Idianale, 
our goddess of good deeds and labor. And shortly, she will commence lowering viaduct span number four into its final position. Once complete, the viaduct will be complete to a continuous length of 6.6 kilometers from our pre yard on the C5 extension to this back in Tony. So who has operated this and maintained this launching gantry during its journey? The answer is a blue team of 28 personnel, 26 of whom are your fellow Filipino countrymen and women. Many guests and visitors to the project are astounded that we've been able to develop the local capability to operate and maintain such sophisticated technology. However, we are not. There is a wealth of local Filipino talent that simply needs to be provided the opportunity. I must, of course, recognize my wider boy team, of whom I am immensely proud and privileged to lead, both at the front line of operations and support services. Your combined initiative and commitment is delivering a world-class piece of rail infrastructure for the residents of Metro Manila, which will remain a legacy for decades to come. Standing here beside me, behind me, are Jose, John Ray, and Nina, as well as Kerry and Chris. They are from our LG team and plant department. All I have to say, team, is let's go to work and do this one more time. Uh, you may hear a series of short siren blasts each time the launching gantry winches start a rotation cycle during lowering of the girder. Do not be alarmed at this, uh, at this siren. It's all part of the safety process. So finally, I'd like to convey the congratulations and good wishes of our Boeing head office and specifically from the Boeing Deputy CEO of uh, TFA Operations, Mr. Vincent Avrion. Thank you, Salamat, and a good day to you all. Thank you, Mr. Strika. So the, definitely the strong partnership between the public and the private sector is an important element in the expansion of our country's transportation sector. Certainly, the success we celebrate today is a shared success for us all and has been made possible because of teamwork. For the next part of our short program, we have invited some of our distinguished guests to share their messages of support. First to give us a message is Mr. Mario Mar Jimenez, representing Paranaque City Mayor Edwin Olivares and is also the head of p -Bible. Thank you. To our beloved, uh, very energetic, hard worker, uh, Secretary, the good Secretary of DOTR, Secretary Tugate, uh, Mr. Al Alfonso, uh, our Barangay Club King, uh, other sec under Secretary, distinguished guests, pleasant good morning to each and everyone. Pasensya na po kayo, hindi natin makakapiling si Mayor ngayon dahil po dumating yung dalawang ating Senador. Nandun po ngayon sa City Hall, si uh, Senator Delica, no? uh, running for Senate at saka si yung kapatid po, si Good Secretary Jen. Uh, Delica rin po, nandun po sila ngayon. Uh, I'd like to share, no? kasi po ito yung ginagawa po itong LRTA na to, extension up to SUPAT, SM SUPAT. Uh, as mentioned nga by the Good Secretary, wala nang naniniwala no? kasi yung dadaan sa ilog ko eh. Pero tignan niyo po ngayon, last year din na lang, tapos na ang project. At ito po ay sinabayan ng papaplano ng ating local government unit. Dahil ang plano po ng ating local government unit, dapat mag-complement ang project rate doon sa ginagawa ng local government, naka-align po ang program. So we are now on the process of finding, uh, finalization ng uh, project proposal. Pero bidid na po ito, no? Meron na po ina-align ng uh, konting technicality sa plano. Maglalagay po tayo ng one hectare na people's market right in front of Redemptory Church. Yung nakikita yung trick, yung air right lang pong kukunin doon. So lahat po ng mga kapatid natin naghahanap buhay dito sa ilalim ng barong barangay baklara, ilalagay na po natin doon. At yung dulo po niya, lalagyan natin ng parking space na ang exit naman po niyan papunta ng Jokno Avenue. Pag natapos po yung Terminal 1, nagparaya po kami dahil mas mahirap po mag-adjust sa LRT. <laughs> Kaya mauna po muna ang release ano, sa kayong station 1. Uh, Pag natapos po yun, makikita na po natin ang setback doon sa gagawing People's Market ng Paranaque. 
that will complement our commuters from the north, from the south. Magpo-converge po yan lahat ng dyan po. No? Tapos we're planning also to construct a vocalator going to Redemptorist Church para yung convenient ng ating mga mananakay. This is a very great milestone in part of the city government. Kasi po, yung e-commerce, ano, makikita yung komersyo na dumadating sa lungsod ng Paranaque from the north and from the south. Magpo-converge po yan sa PITF. Another undertaking din po. Nandun si Secretary to Gabi ng groundbreaking. Ngayon po, tapos na. Very, very busy po ang PITX. Can you imagine, galing kang Matangas, bababa kang PITX, pagsakay mo ng LRTA, passing this railway, nasa no less than time, nasa monumento na po kayo. No? Tapos, iikot yan, finally, sa Trinoma. No? Napakalaking kaging hawahan po yan. Kaya nga, may, may plano rin po ang ating lungsod ng Paranaque to put up additional parking space somewhere in Supa. To the congest traffic, yung mga taga-barangay BF po, yung mga ibang other subdivision doon sa south, kung pwede na po ipark na lang doon sa parking space, mag-commute ng LRT going north, magbayad ng 40 pesos, hindi na po sila nakadagdag sa daloy ng traffic po ng ating Metro Manila. Napakalaking ginhawa po ang dulot na ito. So, in behalf of our mayor, congratulations. Job well done. At uh, congratulations, Secretary Tugadev, sa bumubuo po ng uh, uh, mga taong may, may napakagandang idea. Napaka, of course, our President, uh, uh, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte for the Built 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 Program. So again, in behalf of our mayor, congratulations. Mabuhay ang LRTA, mabuhay po ang DOTR, mabuhay po ang Nusot ng Parino. Present, good morning, and maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jimenez. Next to give us a few words is LRT Administrator Jeremy Regina. Good morning to everyone. Um, looking at uh, what has been accomplished right now, it only brings LRTA management to look back to the history, to the long history of the Cavite Extension. The Cavite Extension went, has gone a long way. This is the first PPP contract signed for the Cavite Extension was in September 2000 under then President Erap with SNC Navalan, the Philippine government signed by then Secretary Rivera representing the Philippine government and SNC Lavalan of Canada representing the private sector. After the, pre the term of President Era, uh, the next administration had the opportunity to review the previous contract, the previous PPP contract, and had some serious questions on the process on whether or not the process initiated in the BLP law was really uh, followed. Because of that, the project went on a standstill. And because of this, and, and, and due to the standstill project, uh, the, there was the problem of delaying further a Cavite extension project that in 2000 was already ripe for completion. And so, under the 10th term of President Gloria Arroyo, the Light, Light Rail Transit Authority Board, with the guidance of the International Finance Committee uh, Corporation, was able to convince SNC Lavalan to enter into a mutual agreement to terminate the previous PPP contract. That mutual agreement between SNC Labalan and the Philippine government entered into again by the DOTR and LR LRTA avoided what could have been a long and protracted problem that could have further delayed the construction and start of the Cavite extension. 
during the time, the only PPP model that everybody was looking into was the MRT3 model. The SNC Lavalan model followed this PPP model of MRT3. With the mutual termination of contract, we are because of this mutual termination of contract, the LRTA and the Philippine government until now is also thankful to SNC Lavalan for understanding the plight, the situation in the Philippines, and understood the need to move forward for the benefit of the residents of Cavite. After this, in 2009, Congress finally appropriated the much needed funds for the right-of-way acquisition. And the right-of-way acquisition started in 2010. Under, the, under then the administration of President Aquino, the bidding for the, like, the PPP project of Cavite Extension started. This time, it was not through an unsolicited proposal, but through a solicited proposal through a competitive public challenge, public bidding. Again, a problem ar arose when there were serious questions on the viability of a PPP project. The first bidding then was a failed bidding. Serious questions were, 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 were asked on the viability of the project. Fortunately, on the second bidding, we had a determined party to push through with this project. A determined partner to push through with this project, sensing the situation in the field, the traffic situation at the time, and that partner the sole compliant bidder at the time was LRMC. This was this model then, in 2014, was a new model. It hasn't been tried in the Philippine setting, and it was the determination and open-mindedness of LRMC that made this project start, that made this project viable and feasible. And then came the administration of President Duterte. We now have witnessed that this determination we found in the private sector, in the person of LRMC, we also found that determination in, in the person of the DOTR Secretary, Secretary Tugade. Secretary Tugade then saw the need to fast track the implementation of this project as we know the tremendous traffic uh, situation in Cavite up to the Manila area. And it was because of this that our very good secretary uh, instructed the DOTR and the LRTA to fast track implementation of this project at all costs. The whole world, rather, it was this project, this PPP model is the second PPP rail model in our country. And not only the residents of Kabiti look upon this project as a success, the whole country is watching on this model, whether this model will succeed. And there is one major lesson that we can see in this model. Despite any kind of model, the determination of both parties is very important. The determination of the private sector led by LRMC and determination of the leadership of the administration and that of the Secretary of the Department of Tourism. And it is for this reason that we are very grateful for the determination of the private sector led by LRMC and that of Secretary Togade. Had there been no determination on both parties, we would not be here right now and we would not be experiencing the substantial accomplishment that the Cavite Extension has already accomplished. We have learned from the past that it takes two to tango. It does not take alone the LRMC, the private sector, to be determined. It does not take alone 
the DOTR or the Philippine government to be determined it has to be two-way. And we are fortunate enough that two parties came to an agreement determined to pursue this project. And so therefore, once again, we have gone a long way and now we have accomplished so much. Again, in behalf of the Philippine government, the Light Rail Transit Authority, and if I may, the Department of Tourism, we again thank the LRMC for their determination, pandemic or no pandemic, in, in pursuing this project, and not only in pursuing this project, even to the point of investing during the pandemic and upgrading the system. LRS MC now to its systems not only in civil works but in electromechanical systems such as the signaling has shown that the Philippines can be at par with international technology in as far as the rail industry is concerned. So again, we thank LRMC and most especially we also thank our Secretary of the Department of Transportation for his determination immediately, in immediately upon his assumption in office to push through and uh, with full speed ahead to complete it and start this project. A while ago, to show the, the secretary, the good secretary's determination again, he reminded us and instructed the DOTR and the Light Rail Transit Authority to double their efforts and go full steam ahead in mapping up the remaining right-of-way acquisitions in the Gavite side and the southern side so that all of us can fully work in full speed together and complete this project finally. Good morning again to everyone. Thank you, Edwin Rivino. As we know, the transportation sector is one of the key factors of our country's progress and economic growth. And under the government's Build, Build, Build program, we've seen many of these developments taking shape in the past years and benefiting the lives of Filipinos. With this, may we invite Department of Transportation Secretary Arthur Tagade to join us on stage and deliver today's keynote message and closing remarks. Sa inyong lahat, uh, magandang umaga. I uh, greet my friend, President of LRMC, King Alfonso. To you, sir, magandang umaga. Uh, you have done uh, a wonderful, great job here, together with the men and women of LRMC. Saludo ho ako sa inyong nagawa at mga gagawin pa. Mabuhay ang LRMC. Nagbibigay galang ako sa ating uh, kasama local government ng Paranaque, Mark Jimenez, ang representative ni uh, Mayor Olivares. Kung wala ho yung local government, walang mangyayari sa proyekto. At kung may mangyayari man, matumal at matagal ang mga pangyayari. Kayo ho sa Paranaque, pinakita niyo ho yung pangangailangan at halaga na magang, magandang partnership between the local government, the private sector, and the national government wherewith you try to achieve projects that are of national significance and importance. I express my appreciation to our contractor, Boya, together with Armstrong. Sir, you have done a great job, and in fact so great, and I never do this. I was tickling uh, TJ. I told TJ, they're doing such a great job. Uh, uh, they involved in uh, some of our other projects. Uh, TJ assured me that you are indeed involved indirectly with other rail projects. To you, sir, I extend my appreciation as part of government for the things you do in the projects, especially the rail sector. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all your efforts and I hope that we will have many more years of working partnership and working togetherness.
I extend uh, my greetings and hello to our friends in the media. Alam po natin na ang media ay mahalagang bahagi para sa tinatawag na good governance at government service. Kayo po ang nagbibigay ugnayan between the project and national government and the public na kung saan tinapakita at linilino yun yung mga proyektong mapapakinabangan ng tao at bansa. Mahalaga at mahalaga ang mga ginagawa ng media. Kaya nga ba sa araw na ito, hinikilala ko kayo at nagbibigay pasalamat ako sa inyo. To all of you here now gathered, I would like to say that uh, 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, said TJ, the government has a vision of putting a complete extension of LRT. This is, was the dream that was 20 years ago. For a period of two years, when I got to meet President Alfonso and LRMC, you have done so much. There were 20 years of waiting, and in two years, sir, you, LRMC, have done so much. Kaya nga sinasabi ko kanina, salamat, 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 LRMC. Malaking bagay ang iyong liderato, inspirasyon, support at tulong, President Alfonso. Napakaganda itong epektong ito. Ano ang kahalagaan nito? Mamaya, ilalagay natin yung last, last spam para mabuo yung kompletong phase one biodac na kung saan magbibigay ugnayan itong lugar na ito papunta sa Cavite na kung saan magkakaroon ng tinatawag na mobility, connectivity at convenience along the lines and along the mandate of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Malaking bagay ho yan. Tandang-tanda ko noon, Al, nung nagumpisa tayo, at pinag-usapan natin itong proyektong ito na kung paano at kailan ipagtutulakan. Madami ang lihim na humalakhak. Madami ang bumato ng alinlangan. Meron pang bumato ng mga alipusta. Para bagang nagdududa na makakaayos tayo ng proyektong ganito. Para bagang ayaw nilang magkaroon at matapos ang proyektong ito. Ngayong araw na to, as we celebrate the laying down of the last span of phase one biodac. Pinapakita natin sa Madlang Bayan na ang proyektong ito ay totoo. Pinapakita natin sa Madlang Bayan na ang proyektong ito ay parating na. Ang proyektong ito ay matatapos na para sa bayan, para sa tao, hindi lamang sa Cavite, sa Las Piñas, sa Palnaki, kundi sa buong sambayanan. Nararapat at nararapat lang talaga tayo na kilalanin ang kaganapan at ginawa ng LRMC. Madami ho kayong pinagdaanan na problema. Problemang material, pro problemang administrasyon, problemang bureaucratic. Pero nakatapos pa rin kayo. Dumating ang pandemya, hindi kayo huminto, mas bali, you took the challenge. And you took the challenge with great stride and a greater result. Kaya nga natapos ito. Ngayong araw as we celebrate, I think it is just proper and appropriate that we salute and give our appreciation and gratitude to LRMC. Sana ho tuloy-tuloy na ito at matatapos na. We give our gratitude to Boy and Alston that you continue and continue well so that this project will achieve its final fruition and completion. And to all of you now gathered here, I thank you for coming over to witness this simple but very milestone performance in the rail sector. Umaambun na ho. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, pati ang Diyos binibindisyonan itong proyektong ito. Kaya nga sabi nila, tama-tama lang, I bless you. Finish the project for the people. Today, I have one request, President King Alfonso. Finish this project and finish this well for the people, for the country, for the people of Las Piñas, Paranaque, and Cavite. Finish it. And now, 
I salute you and I wish you well that you are able to finish and complete it. Sa inyong lahat, magandang umama. Thank you very much, Sec Art. Now we may uh, we will just do this very quickly because of the light shower. So maybe please request the following officials to proceed to the area designated for our ribbon cutting ceremony, with our launching girder as the backdrop. So LRMC President CEO Juan Alfonso, Ui Project Director Drasco Striga, DOTR Secretary Art Tugade, LRT Administrator Jeremy Regino. Mr. Mario Martinez and Barangay Chairman Julius Salmon. So these six officials will be joining our ribbon flying for more